Level zero, you're breathing radiation right now, not from some distant nuclear accident or medical scan, just from existing on planet Earth. Every second, cosmic rays from dying stars millions of light years away are piercing through your body. The ground beneath your feet is quietly releasing uranium and thorium, ancient elements that have been slowly decaying since the planet formed. This is background radiation, roughly 0.1 microsieverts per hour of invisible energy that's been your constant companion since birth. Your cells have been playing defense against this cosmic bombardment for your entire life, repairing tiny DNA nicks faster than they accumulate. It's like having a maintenance crew that fixes potholes as they appear. The damage never builds up because life evolved under these conditions. Over a full year, this background radiation delivers about two to three millisieverts to your body. To put that in perspective, that's less radiation than you'll get from, well, we'll get to that. But here's where it gets interesting. Some places on Earth are naturally more radioactive than others, live in a granite-rich area or at high altitude, and you're getting a bigger dose of this cosmic seasoning. People in Denver absorb more background radiation than those in Miami, yet somehow they're not all glowing in the dark. Background radiation is proof that a little bit of something dangerous can be completely harmless, like how a single drop of ocean water won't drown you, even though the ocean definitely can. Level 1. Your banana is trying to kill you. Well, not really. But that potassium-rich fruit is genuinely radioactive, delivering about 0.1 microsieverts every time you eat one. Before you swear off fruit forever, consider this. Your own body contains potassium-40, a radioactive isotope that means you're literally irradiating yourself from the inside. You're a walking, talking radiation source. The house you're sitting in right now, also slightly radioactive. Those brick walls, that concrete foundation, even the granite countertops, they all contain trace amounts of uranium and thorium. It's like living inside a very, very weak nuclear reactor that's been running for billions of years. The dose is so low that you get more radiation from sleeping next to another person all night than from most building materials, which is obviously not something you'll need to worry about anytime soon. Brazil nuts are actually more radioactive than most nuclear waste, legally speaking. A handful contains enough natural radium that if it were artificial, it would require special disposal. Yet somehow, Brazil nut vendors aren't wearing hazmat suits. The average American absorbs around 8 to 10 microsieverts daily just from this radioactive world we inhabit, about 3 millisieverts per year of unavoidable cosmic seasoning. This level teaches us something crucial. Radiation isn't inherently evil. It's everywhere, it's natural, and at these doses, it's about as dangerous as the air you breathe, which ironically also contains radioactive radon gas. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Level two, you're sitting in an aluminum tube six miles above the earth and the universe is trying to irradiate you. At 35,000 feet, the atmosphere that normally shields you from cosmic radiation has thinned to almost nothing. Those high energy particles from exploding stars, they're hitting you with the enthusiasm of cosmic buckshot. A single cross country flight exposes you to about 35 microsieverts, roughly the same as seven bananas or what your body naturally accumulates in four days. Flight attendants and pilots are considered occupational radiation workers in some countries because they accumulate several millisieverts per year just from doing their jobs at altitude. Frequent flyers unknowingly join the ranks of nuclear workers, radiologists, and uranium miners in terms of annual radiation exposure. But here's the twist. This elevated dose is still completely harmless. A routine dental x-ray delivers about the same radiation as a short flight. You could fly across the country every week for a year and still receive less radiation than a single CT scan. The human body shrugs off these doses like they're gentle raindrops. Mountain climbers and people living in high-altitude cities like Denver or Tibet get this cosmic bonus dose constantly. They're essentially living in a slightly more radioactive world, and statisticians have to squint very hard through decades of data to find any health effects at all. Level 2 is where we learn that elevated doesn't mean dangerous. It just means we're finally measuring something above the background noise of existence. Level 3. Here's where radiation becomes your unlikely savior. A chest x-ray delivers about 0.1 millisieverts, roughly the same as 10 days of natural background radiation compressed into a fraction of a second. A CT scan? That's closer to 5 to 10 millisieverts, equivalent to 3 years of cosmic background delivered in minutes. Yet these dangerous doses save millions of lives every year by revealing tumors, fractures, and internal bleeding that would otherwise kill. The medical field has turned radiation into a double agent, using the very force that can cause cancer to detect and treat cancer. It's like using controlled explosions that demolish a dangerous building before it collapses on its own. The radiation risk from a CT scan is real but microscopic. Studies suggest that might increase your lifetime cancer risk by a few tenths of a percent. Meanwhile, missing a diagnosis because you skipped a scan could increase your mortality risk by orders of magnitude. At 10 millisieverts, you're still in the realm of statistical whispers, effects so small that scientists argue about whether they exist at all. You don't feel anything, you don't get sick, and your cells repair the minor damage faster than it accumulates. It's roughly the amount of background radiation a person living in a naturally high radiation area might absorb in a year. The beauty of level 3 is that it represents controlled, justified risk. Every radiation medical dose follows the ALARA principle, as low as reasonably achievable, balancing the tiny radiation risk against the enormous medical benefit, its calculated danger in service of your health.
health. Level 4. Welcome to the workplace where people wear dosimeters like jewelry and radiation badges like identification cards. Nuclear power plant workers, radiologists, uranium miners, they're the professional dancers in radiation's ballroom, stepping carefully around doses that would make most people nervous. The legal limit for radiation workers is typically 20 millisieverts per year, averaged over 5 years, with no single year exceeding 50 millisieverts. That's roughly 10 times what the average person absorbs annually, but it's still far below the threshold where anyone gets immediately sick. These workers undergo regular health monitoring not because they're an imminent danger, but because we want to catch any long-term effects before they become problems. 50 millisieverts is the annual dose that makes regulators say that's enough. Not because it will harm you this year, but because accumulating doses at this level year after year might slightly increase cancer risk over a lifetime. It's like the speed limit on a highway, designed with safety margins built in, accounting for the fact that humans aren't perfect and accidents happen. Some old uranium mines had workers absorbing these doses regularly before we understood the risks. Interestingly, many of those miners lived normal lifespans, though some did develop lung problems from inhaling radioactive dust, a reminder that how you're exposed matters as much as how much you're exposed to. This level represents the boundary between acceptable risk and requires careful monitoring. It's where radiation transforms from an invisible background character into something that demands respect and attention. Level 5. This is where radiation stops being polite. At 100 millisieverts, epidemiologists can finally detect a clear statistical increase in cancer risk, like trying to hear a whisper in a noisy room and suddenly being able to make out the words. It's the dose where radiation's long-term effects stop high hiding in statistical noise and start revealing themselves in population studies. Here's the strange thing about this level. You still won't feel anything. 500 millisieverts can hit your body and you'll go about your day completely unaware that anything happened. But under the circus, cellular damage is accumulating faster than your repair mechanisms can handle. It's like a slow motion car accident where the impact is invisible, but the consequences unfold over decades. At the higher end of this range, around 500 millisieverts, some people might experience what doctors call prodromal symptoms. Fatigue, mild nausea, a general feeling that something isn't right. Blood tests would reveal a drop in lymphocyte count as radiation begins killing immune system cells. It's your body's early warning system finally detecting that something unusual has happened. This level also marks the beginning of deterministic effects, health impacts that have a clear threshold dose. Around 500 millisieverts to the whole body might cause temporary sterility in men or subtle changes to the lens of the eye. These aren't random statistical risks anymore. They're predictable biological responses to radiation damage. Level 5 is where radiation stops being an abstract concept and becomes a measurable health threat. It's rare. You'd only encounter these doses in serious industrial accidents, certain high-dose medical procedures, or during space travel, but it's where the invisible force that surrounds us every day reveals its potential for harm. Level 6. 1,000 millisieverts. One full sievert. This is where your body stops whispering warnings and starts shouting alarms. Within hours of exposure, many people will experience nausea, vomiting, and a crushing fatigue that feels like the worst flu of their life. Except it's not a virus, it's radiation sickness, and your immune system is under direct attack. At this level, radiation becomes a biological vandal, smashing through the body's most rapidly dividing cells like a bowl in a china shop. Your bone marrow, the factory that produces blood cells, takes a direct hit. Lymphocytes, the white blood cells that fight infection, begin dying en masse. Within days, blood tests will show the cellular equivalent of a biological disaster zone. The cruel irony is that most people survive a one siever dose with medical care. It's serious, it's unpleasant, and it requires hospitalization, but it's not a death sentence. Your body's remarkably resilient, and given time, support, and treatment for infections, most people recover fully. The nausea fades, new blood cells replace the damaged ones, and life goes on, though with a slightly elevated lifetime cancer risk. This is the dose range experienced by some early responders at Chernobyl who survived to tell their stories. It's roughly equivalent to receiving 1,000 chest x-rays simultaneously Spontaneously, or 100 CT scans delivered in minutes instead of spread across a lifetime. The human body can absorb enormous punishment and still bounce back, but level 6 is where radiation announces its presence with unmistakable authority. Level 7. Two sieverts is where radiation stops playing games. Nearly everyone exposed to this dose will become seriously ill, and the symptoms arrive with the subtlety of a freight train. Severe nausea and vomiting begin within an hour, followed by a deceptive latent period where victims might feel better, the calm before the biological storm. Your bone marrow, the body's blood cell factory, is now under sustained bombardment. Within weeks, your white blood cell count plummets towards zero, leaving you vulnerable to infections that would normally be trivial. Platelets, the cells responsible for blood clotting, also crash, meaning a small cut could become a medical emergency. Your immune system isn't just compromised, it's in full retreat. This is where radiation exposure becomes a race against time. Without medical intervention, antibiotics to prevent infections, blood transfusions to replace damaged cells, growth factors to stimulate bone marrow recovery, some people will die from complications like overwhelming sepsis or internal bleeding. The radiation
radiation itself doesn't kill directly. It damages the body's defense system so severely that ordinary threats become lethal. With modern medical care, most people can survive a two-siever dose, but recovery takes months and is far from guaranteed. Hair loss becomes visible evidence of cellular damage. Survivors often describe feeling like their body betrayed them, exhausted, vulnerable, and fundamentally changed by an invisible force they never saw coming. This level represents the frontier between serious medical emergency and potentially fatal. It's where radiation crosses from being a statistical risk to being an immediate threat to survival. Level 8 four sieverts. This is the median lethal dose, the amount of radiation that will kill half of all exposed people within two months, even with medical care. At the upper end of this range, around six sieverts, survival becomes extraordinary rather than expected. The human body at this dose level experiences something close to total system failure. Bone marrow stops producing blood cells entirely. The immune system doesn't just weaken, it vanishes. White blood cell counts drop to nearly zero, leaving the body defenseless against bacteria that normally live harmlessly on your skin. Every surface becomes becomes a potential infection source. Internal bleeding becomes a constant threat as platelet counts crash. The gastrointestinal system begins to fail as the lining of the stomach and intestines, normally replaced every few days, can no longer regenerate. Victims experience bloody diarrhea, severe dehydration, and malnutrition as their digestive tract essentially dissolves. Modern medicine can sometimes perform miracles at this level. Bone marrow transplants, isolation chambers to prevent infection, experimental treatments that push the boundaries of medical science. But even with heroic efforts, survival above five sieverts requires both exceptional medical care and considerable luck. The few who survive often face years of health complications and a significantly elevated cancer risk. This is the dose range that killed many of the Chernobyl firefighters and plant workers who responded to the disaster. They didn't die from burns or trauma. They died from radiation systematically destroying their body's ability to sustain life. Level 8 represents the point where radiation exposure becomes an existential threat. Level 9, 10 sieverts. This is where we enter the realm of radiation radiation doses that are simply incompatible with human survival. At this level, radiation doesn't just damage individual organ systems, it attacks the central nervous system directly, causing brain swelling, seizures, and rapid loss of consciousness. The gastrointestinal syndrome becomes complete and irreversible. The entire lining of the digestive tract dies, leading to uncontrollable bleeding, fluid loss, and circulatory shock. Death typically occurs within one to two weeks, not from cancer or infection, but from the body's basic life support systems shutting down simultaneously. Beyond 20 sieverts, victims experience what radiation specialists call the neurovascular syndrome. Neurological symptoms that appear within minutes, confusion, loss of coordination, convulsions, and coma follow as radiation damages the brain's blood vessels and neurons directly. At these extreme doses, death can occur within hours. This level exists primarily in the realm of nuclear accidents and weapons. The technicians in the 1999 Tokai Mora criticality accident received doses in this range. One absorbed over 20 sieverts and survived 83 days of intensive medical treatment before succumbing. Their prolonged survival was both a testament to modern medicine and a demonstration of the limits of what the human body can endure. Level 9 represents radiation exposure at its most catastrophic. Doses so extreme that they overwhelm every body biological system simultaneously. It's the radiation equivalent of being struck by lightning, except the bolt lasts for minutes instead of milliseconds. Level 10, 20 to 50 sieverts. This is the upper boundary of radiation exposure encountered in the real world. Doses so extreme they only exist at the epicenter of nuclear disasters or in the immediate aftermath of nuclear weapons. Standing next to an exposed reactor core, being caught in a criticality accident, or surviving the initial blast of a nuclear weapon only to face the radiation. At this level, describing health effects become becomes almost meaningless because survival is measured in hours, not days. The central nervous system fails immediately. Victims may lose consciousness within minutes as their brain swells and blood vessels rupture. Every organ system crashes simultaneously in a cascade of biological failure that no medical intervention can prevent. Historically, doses in this range have been recorded only in the most extreme circumstances. Some victims of the atomic bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, who were very close to ground zero, received these doses. Though most died from the blast and thermal effects, before before radiation could take its course. A few workers at Chernobyl, who were in the reactor building during the explosion, were exposed to these levels. This represents the absolute ceiling of radiation exposure in any realistic scenario. Beyond 50 sieverts, we're entering the realm of theoretical physics rather than medical science. It's a dose so extreme that it would only be encountered by someone standing directly next to an unshielded nuclear reactor core or at the center of a nuclear explosion. Level 10 exists not as a practical medical category, but as a reminder of radiation's ultimate power the invisible force that can destroy human life as efficiently as fire or crushing force, just more slowly and with mathematical precision. Thank you for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe.